Hey, the book of John chapter 14 is where we're at today. The book of John chapter 14. And we are going to start from, the, uh, from verse 15. And, uh, but I'm going to pray uh, because I know this. I can stand here and talk. But I don't want to stand here and just talk because I can do that all day long. What I need is the Holy Spirit's help. What we need is help to prepare our hearts. I really believe that I have one of the most important messages that all of us could receive today. If we get this message, I guarantee you, your life will, will never be the same. How many of you like that? Like, man, I don't want the same kind of old life. I want something fresh. I want something new. And man, just hold on to your seat, man. Hold on to your seat. So I'm going to pray. Father, we honor you. We worship you. You are a good, good Father. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would help us, that you would teach us. As the Lord Jesus said, that you are our helper. You are going to help us. You're going to teach us everything that we need to know. And so I pray for your anointing and power in the name of Jesus. I pray and everyone said, amen. amen. The book of John. So I have a picture up here that, um, that I would like for you to see. And this is the Columbia River Dam. Now, I want you to just kind of picture the power of that. I, I don't have a video. I mean, I could. But I just, I thought that the picture would be good enough. Just look at the power of that water, the dam. I mean, it's pretty incredible. You, would you not agree? Like, man, the water. But here's what we know. So we, we, we would think for a moment that the power of what we see, this water, is coming from the top. Now look, it would, you would think it's coming from the top. How many of you kind of agree with me? But it doesn't. Do you know that it's coming at the bottom? It's just a bunch of generators that is giving what we're seeing power. I know I'm going to kind of transition for a little bit. Have you met people with incredible power? Like, their life like you, you look at them you're like man just power this is just really amazing i i see, I see my wife my my late wife in, in spite of what she was going through or what she went through in spite of her dying this woman was was just her life was so powerful i mean i witnessed it and many of you had witnessed this power and, and, and so but you might say to me well, Pastor Angelo, your wife is amazing. Yeah, maybe. Oh, she's just, just a man, just her life. Uh, she's just a good person. Yeah, maybe. You know, and you might say all this wonderful stuff about my wife. But do you know what, what's behind that life? You ready? It's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Spirit. I mean, the power behind that life was her relationship with God, the Holy Spirit. And because she was able to learn the truth about the Holy Spirit, man, she grabbed a hold of that and said, man, I want that. I mean, the Holy Spirit could actually do this. I mean, in fact, that all this truth, I could just embrace that in faith. And all of a sudden, lo and behold, I mean, she just took off. Her life became so powerful. And so, I don't know about you, man. Like, don't you want to live powerfully? Amen. Don't you want to live in faith? Not pride, but in faith. Don't you want to live a, a life that, that is just so amazing with having this spiritual wisdom? Don't you want to live your life victoriously, effectively, and successfully? Don't you want to live your life and really in freedom, knowing that the power, you're living in power, you're living in this strength and fear, just being fearless. Don't you want that? Yeah. I want that. Not- Are you with me? And uh, so here's, here's what we know. That the behind the, the, the people that we see that lives in power Behind all of that is the Holy Spirit. 
And so here, uh, why is this message important for you and me? All right, so why is this message important for you and me? Why? Because, friends, if you and I don't know the truth about the Holy Spirit, you and I have been missing out on the most important part of, our, of your Christian life and my Christian life. And so... For those that are watching, sorry, I uh, just need, needed to turn off my mic for a little bit, but that's all right. Okay, so, hey, let's just refocus right here, okay? All right, so here we go. Why is this message important? Why? Here's why. If you and I don't know the truth about the Holy Spirit, you and I have been missing out on the most important part of your Christian life and my Christian life. If we don't understand the Holy Spirit. And so, you don't want to miss out, do you? You don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out. And, and so, I want to know everything about the Holy Spirit, you know, to help me live a life that I meant to live, that you're meant to live, right? Not in defeat, not in doubts, not in fear. I mean, who would want to live that way? Is it really possible for you and me to live in power, to live in victory, to live in freedom, to live fearlessly? Yes, it is. Is it possible to live in faith? Yes, it is possible because of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14 tells us this. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, look at this, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Now look at me for a moment. I will ask the Father, Jesus said, I will ask the Father, and he will send, look at this, an advocate to help you. who? You. Look around. Like you, me. Like, tell me, you, me. Like, yeah, that's confusing, but you. And you tell me what? You. Yes. yes. We got it. We're on the same boat. <laughs> it was kind of confusing for a little bit, but you get it. But the Holy Spirit was sent to help us, the church, right? And look at this. Just yesterday? Just today? What? Look, forever. To be with you forever. Amen. What? Wait, what? That's how much help you and I need. That Jesus knew and the Father knew. Oh, he's going to, I'm just going to need some help. Right? He's going to need some help. Not just yesterday, today, but for the rest of his life. Amen. Angelo needs help. Forever. Amen. Like that dude needs help. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I need help. And so you need help. Amen. Right? That's why the Holy Spirit was sent. Now look at this. In, in verse uh, 25. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate, look at this. The advocate. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. What? Will teach me all things. And remind you of everything I have said to you. Whoa. Whoa. And so here's some incredible truths about what we just read. And, and here. The Holy Spirit, we know that he's the third person of, of the Godhead, in the Godhead. We know that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You might ask, what do you, like, how do you explain that? I can't explain that. Just because if I could explain that, then he wouldn't be God. Right? My little brain wouldn't be able to explain God. I mean, you can't do it. I can't do it. Nobody can. Because it's God. But... He reveals himself in three persons. One God in three persons. And so Tracy preached about 
the power that took place in the book of Acts chapter 2, the baptism in the, in the Holy Spirit. And last week, she preached about that, and I felt like, man, I got to continue about this just because we need it. Man, I'm going to tell you some stuff that would be so powerful that if you just grab a hold of it, oh, man, your life would change dramatically. Now, number one I want to talk to you about is this, the evidence of the Holy Spirit's power. The evidence of his power. And we see, we see that. Way. So here, by the way, Jesus is not here, okay? I, I, I just, you might say, what? Jesus is not here? Yeah. Because in the book of Acts chapter 2 tells us, or Acts chapter 1 tells us that Jesus ascended into heaven. And the people were looking up, and two angels had to show up and say, uh, man of Galilee, uh, this Jesus that you saw went up to heaven? We'll come back. So Jesus went up, and somebody came down. Who? The Holy Spirit came down. Acts chapter 2, tongues like fire. I mean, they were baptized, and they spoke in tongues. And the, the people in that community were like, whoa, whoa. Wait, man, I, I, I'm hearing my own native tongue. Like why? like, why am I hearing Tagalog? And some of you would say, why am I hearing you know, like Nigerian language, my language, or, or my, the Spanish language, or whatever. Because the Holy Spirit's power came down. It's power. And all of a sudden, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, man, we had seen some incredible power. Power. And so when they spoke in tongues, they were like, oh, my goodness, what, what's happening? They were bewildered. They were amazed of what they were seeing and hearing. Like, whoa, what is going on here? Like, look at this. Uh, look at this. So people were so confused what was happening. Peter, Peter, one of the apostles, who denied the Lord previously. And then all of a sudden, he comes out with confidence. Like, wait, what happened? Because he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. That gave him power. Power. And Jesus said, do not leave Jerusalem until you receive power. Power to do what? To witness. And all of a sudden, Peter, not pridefully, but in confidence, he was like, man of Israel. He started to preach. And then, man, miracles it started to happen. People got saved. And, and Peter said, if you repent... You will be forgiven and you will be baptized. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, 3,000 of them repented and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine 3,000 people? That's amazing to me. And then all of a sudden, because of this that took place, people were getting saved left and right. And all of a sudden, the church began the church began, and look, people started to commit tremendously to the church. People started like, man, we see some need. And all of a sudden, they captured this generosity, the heart of generosity of God, that they started selling their stuff, and they gave to everyone in need. I mean, this is crazy stuff. Never happened. It's like all of a sudden, they're not looking at their, their selfish stuff, whatever, it's all about me, myself, and I. They weren't looking at that anymore. They're looking at God, and they're looking at people. I mean, it was a tremendous change. And then, look at this. They started valuing church. They started just fellowshipping, eating together. I mean, miracles, healing. I mean, look at this. Peter and John, after getting baptized, they were heading to the, to the church, to the temple. And there was a man who was crippled at birth and asking for money. So all oh, right, right? Can you help me out, dude? Do you have a couple of dollars? And Peter and John said, uh, "We don't have any money to give you, but what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, get up and pick up your mat." And the dude just got up and picked up his mat like miracles, power. They were walking in power. So it was evident that the Holy Spirit. When he came down, it gave them power. Now, the question is, is this same power available for you today? The answer is yes. 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 
a resounding yes. It is available for you today. So why is it that it seems like we're living our lives as if it's not available today? They're saying to me, oh, I've, seen, I've heard it, like, why do we need the Holy Spirit? Why not? Don't you think we need it? Don't, what, did Jesus come? Did I miss Jesus? The last time I checked, he hasn't, he's not here. And so he hasn't come. That means we need the Holy Spirit, right? I mean, every single day, you need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. And here, friends, not only that this power is available, I want you to know that why in the world would we, would settle to live less? Why, why would we settle to live par with, you know, just powerless? Like, as if we're constantly defeated. Have you seen those people? Like, they're walking like, oh, my life. <laughs> like, wait, 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 wait. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will be with you and will be in you. So if the God of the universe who created heavens and earth not only that he is with me, but in me. Wait, 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 wait. So, like, wait, like, what? Like, he's with me and in me, and why in the world would I live, like, as if I was defeated? If the Holy Spirit is the creator of everything, he lives in me with power, would you not agree with me, either you're young or old, it doesn't matter who you are, that we could confidently stand, not in pride, in humility, but knowing who we are in Christ, knowing who we have, right? We could just come in confidence and say, come on. Hallelujah. And we become fearless. We, we, we now living in victory, in faith. And men, we're like, come on, just like what mountain, what giants? Like, because we are now full of strength and we realize that the Holy Spirit in me gives him power. Amen. The Holy Spirit gives you power. Yes. Yes. I mean, to live righteously. The Holy Spirit does that. In holiness, the Holy Spirit does that. The Holy Spirit is our helper. But do you know that the Holy Spirit is the most neglect person in the Godhead? Listen to me. It's the most neglect person in the Godhead. I just want to remind you, Jesus is not here. He is in heaven. When Jesus came and went to heaven, the Holy Spirit came. And Jesus said, he will be with you, not me. The Holy Spirit will be with you and in you. Amen. So the question is, when was the last time you spoke to the Holy Spirit specifically? When was the last time you recognized him? Good question. Because the second thing I want to talk to you about is not only his power that is available for you and me, Christians, it's available. If you gave your life to Christ, you have the Holy Spirit because he lives in you. But do you know that he engages with us as well? He wants to engage with you and me. Look at this. Uh, in the book of Acts, it tells us this, 16. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phygeria uh, and Gal Galatia. Look at this. Having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching. The Holy Spirit said, you're not going to preach there. I have a plan for you. And they went to another place. You're not going to do it there. I have a plan for you. And they just kept going. And Paul and his companions were so engaged with the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit would lead, and they would respond. And do you know that, that, is, that that's what needs to happen today, is that the Holy Spirit wants to engage with you, but we're neglecting you. But the Holy Spirit wants to engage with you, and he wants you and me to respond to him as he tries to engage, because he is the one that will teach you all things. He's the one who will guide us in all truth. And everything that Jesus taught us, Right? In the Word of God, the Holy Spirit is the one who will remind us of, of that. He is our helper. He is our guide. He is our comforter. He is, uh, he is the one who will convict us of our sins. 
He is the one who will help you and me to live righteously and in holiness. He is the one. Amen. Good and then thirdly, we, we need him desperately. Oh my goodness. We need him desperately. Have you looked at the world lately? I mean, we have lost our minds. I mean, we do the, all this crazy stuff. And, and unfortunately, the Christians are joining the craziness of the world. And we were called to be salt and light. We supposed to be separated from the world because we're salt and light. And somehow we find a lot of them joining the world. We need the Holy Spirit desperately. I mean, this is some, some, so many crazy stuff happening. Like even our schools are being attacked. Children are being attacked and telling them lies after lies about their gender. Like seriously? I mean, all of the, all the Christians, I, I was, on, you know, I was looking at some things, some social media stuff. And I saw this brother that I knew would post some lies. Like, dude, that's not what God says. Compromising with truth. We see so many of them. I wonder, though, if they are really engaged with the Holy Spirit. Because here's the last, last time I checked. If a person is engaged with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will only lead you in all truth, Amen. not lies. Amen. We've lost our minds. And you don't need to join them. Don't compromise with truth. Don't. It's not worth to lose your salvation. Away from me, you evil Jew. I never knew you. You don't, you don't want those words. I don't. And then live life always mindful of the Holy Spirit. Mindful. Like literally mindful of the Holy Spirit. I, I just want to kind of settle on this for a little bit because this is so vital. Because he, really, the Holy Spirit is the most neglected person in the Godhead. And I just want to just encourage you and challenge us to really live your life and my life. Always mindful of the Holy Spirit. Is that possible when you wake up? You know, you give glory to the Father because Jesus, Jesus said, if you're going to pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So direct your prayers to the Father. But when you start engaging and expressing your needs, you need to ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're my helper. You're going to help me with this truth. You're going to help me with this. You're going to help me with that. You're going to help me to live victoriously because you are my helper. Amen. And then you're going to step it by saying, in Jesus' name. Constantly mindful. Earlier, I was talking to, I mean, we were having our, our, our after um, uh, the uh, going deeper. So a brother, we're, we're asking some good but tough questions. I'm already engaging with the Holy Spirit. I'm like, Holy Spirit, just give me the right answer. I mean, the, the, the right thing to say. Because I don't have what it takes. I need a Holy Spirit. I need to engage with him. I need to be mindful of the Holy Spirit because I know I need his help. Hallelujah. Do you really think that I would wake up and, oh, Angelo knows, knows it all. He's good. <laughs> no. No, I don't. I need a Holy Spirit. You need a Holy Spirit. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you need the Holy Spirit. And so what happens, friends, when we are mindful of the Holy Spirit? Uh, I mean, your life would be completely changed. Because all of a sudden, you're constantly thinking about the one who could help you in your life. Right? And so the last thing I want to talk to you about is this, is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. So look at this glass. Look at this glass and... This glass, if I ask you, if I ask you this question, how can you get the air out of this bottle or this glass? 
Well, you might say, well, get a vacuum to get the air out of it. Well, it's probably not going to work. If I put a vacuum, it's probably going to break, right? It's just going to break. But do you know how to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Like that. That's how you get the air out of the glass. And this is how we get filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how you get filled with the Holy Spirit, friends. Is that constantly thinking about the Holy Spirit. In fact, you know, I mean, the fruit of the Spirit, friends, the fruit of the Spirit simply means this. It's the fruit that came from the Holy Spirit. It's not natural for you and me to have it. So what are the fruit? Well, here, love, joy, peace, uh, patience, gentleness, faithfulness, uh, uh, long-suffering, and self-control. Fruit of the Spirit. So how do you attain all of that? By saying, fill me up. Not of the world. The problem is we are full of the world. I mean, when we have like this crazy, you know, this crazy stuff in life that we are bombarded with all of these problems and all of the worries and all of the negativity and all of this stuff, the worldly stuff. But you're not called to have the worldly stuff to be full of that. You are called to be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Come on, come on, talk to me, right? Yes. yes. And friends, I don't know. I know I've been there. It's like, man, like it seems like my, my mind is so full of worries in life. And I was like, I wake up, like, like I'm worried. Like I wake up and I'm thinking about some problems. So all, some of this stuff, I want to tell you, this message is for me. And I hope it is for you too. Because I need to be reminded that I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I had two hours of sleep last night. Two hours. You know why? Because I'm dealing with some problems that took away my, my sleep. Because I allowed it. I'm just being honest with you. Two hours. You know what's giving me strength right now? Holy Spirit. Yeah, and coffee. <laughs> Holy Spirit and coffee. <laughs> Lots of coffee. <laughs> and uh, friends, we really need to be thinking about this, right? You want your life to, be, to change? Man, it's the Holy Spirit. He's got the power to, to give. He wants to give it to you. He wants to empower you. He wants to equip you. He wants to help you. He wants to guide you. He wants to do everything so that you can have this life that Jesus, Jesus promised. I came to give you life and life abundantly. And life abundantly, it's like don't settle for anything less. He wants you to experience the life that God has to offer for you in great abundance. And so you better not settle for anything less. It's time for us to kind of, you know what, not in, in pride, but just like, man, stand tall because of the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. He's not only with you, but in me. Greater is he that is in me, the Holy Spirit, than the one who is in the world. If God is for me, who can be, who can be against me? God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of love, love power, and sound mind. And so Romans chapter 12, I mean, if you are crazy, just struggling in your mind of all of this damage and toxic stuff of bombarding you because of life and problem and storms that comes your way, you know what? All you got to do, the Bible says, do not conform to the pattern of this world because there are warrior, warrior, war, warriors, war, warriors, warriors, <laughs> warriors. Whoo, that was 
a, a, a tough one. So anyway, so I mean, they're just constantly worrying about life. Right? But God didn't call you to do that. You know, it's like he didn't call you. He didn't call me to do that. He called me to stand tall. Great is he that is in me, that is the one who is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. I am not a tail. I am a head. You are a head. You're not defeated. You are victorious in Christ Jesus. Have we read God's truth lately? So, be aware of his power. Be mindful of him daily and throughout the day. Just know that you are desperate for him, and I'm desperate for him. And that I need to make sure that I engage with him as he wants to engage with us. He wants us to respond to him. He wants to be part of your life and my life. And then being filled with the Holy Spirit, not of the world, not of problems, not of your worries. Don't be filled with that. Because then if you're filled with that, then you will have fear, doubts, defeat, right? Who wants that? Don't you think it's time for us to just stand tall? Like, I can really experience this incredible power that is available for me because of the Holy Spirit.